Hi, my name is Adrian Stanley. In this video, I want to talk about stress, what it is, why we experience it, and the reason for the physiological changes that we undergo when we're in stress. The first thing I want to talk about is the evolutionary purpose of stress. Back in the day before civilization as we know it, humans had to run away from many predators like lions, tigers, bears, things like that. So we developed this system, and many other animals have this system too, that allows them to deal with predatory situations, whether or not they want to fight the situ fight the predator off or run away. Now there are many physiological changes that occur in our body when we're under stress. Uh, in a moment, I'll talk about all the different changes that happens. Um, and an, an important part of our nervous system that deals with stress is the sympathetic nervous system and the HPA axis. Um, in your body, you have two different systems. You have the sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system is what's always on. It's what's always uh, when you're relaxed. You're not dealing with any stressors. You're not dealing with being chased by anything. You just, you're just normal. Your sympathetic nervous system deals with your fight or flight response. The sympathetic nervous system will generally act opposite the parasympathetic nervous system. The HPA axis is responsible for the release of adrenaline and all of the, the stress inducing hormones into your blood. And I'll describe the HPA axis in a second. And at the end of the video, I want to talk about the effects of chronic stress on the body. So constant, constant stress can have negative effects. And I just wanted to talk about those. The main physiological changes that you experience when you're undergoing stress is elevated heart rate, vasoconstriction of your, of your blood vessels, energy mobilization, increased insulin, an immune, a suppressed immune system, and a suppressed digestive system. The reason why we experience elevated heart rate when we're under stress is so that the blood can carry oxygen faster to our cells. The, the faster the heart's beating, the, the more quickly it can deliver oxygen to, to the cells in your body. And the reason why blood vessels constrict is because constricted blood vessels allow for faster blood flow. In the energy mobilization process, the body starts breaking down fats and things like that to gain energy. Insulin levels increase to allow more absorption of glucose into the, into the cells, and more glucose into the cells allows for more glycolysis, and glycolysis produces energy for the cells. So the increased insulin helps with increased energy in the cells to help you deal with the stress. Your immune system becomes suppressed because now since your body's dealing with an immediate danger, it wants to conserve energy for more essential things like your muscles and things like that. And for that, for that same reason, your digestion is also suppressed. In this illustration here, these red dots, these red circles are representative of parasympathetic neurons. So these are representative of parasympathetic neurons. These are these neurons here are called preganglionic parasympathetic neurons. These neurons here are called postganglionic parasympathetic neurons. These blue these blue neurons here are representative of your sympathetic neurons. So these ones over here are representative of preganglionic sympathetic neurons, and these ones are representative of postganglionic sympathetic neurons. All right, so before I start describing the sympathetic nervous system, I want to quickly describe what the parasympathetic nervous system is. Parasympathetic nervous system is a nervous system that's always on when you're calm and when you're not under any stress. The neurons that control your parasympathetic nervous system are located in your, your hind brain, and they will send signals to other neurons with inside your body that will signal your cardiovascular system. And basically, it generally makes sure that your heart is pumping at a normal, slow rate. What these parasympathetic neurons also do is they will signal your abdominal viscera, which is the, the neurons that innervate your stomach and your intestines. So this, is, this will make sure that your digestion is, is, up, is happening at normal rates and it's all functioning normally. In your sympathetic nervous system, you have uh, these neurons, these neurons in your, in your spine, whenever your sympathetic nervous system is activated, they'll signal the postganglionic sympathetic neurons, and those will signal your cardiovascular system, 
and your abdominal viscera as well as your adrenal medulla. In your cardiovascular system, it's going to cause an increase in your heart rate. In your abdominal viscera, it'll basically suppress your digestive system. And in your adrenal medulla, it'll cause the secretion of adrenaline and cortisol into your blood. Adrenaline and cortisol will go on to induce, induce a stress response in the other organs in your body. I'll describe in more detail cortisol and adrenaline in just a moment. In the HPA axis, HPA standing for hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, basically the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus will secrete this molecule called corticotropin releasing hormone. Then this corticotropin releasing hormone will float down, will enter the blood and go into go a short distance to your anterior pituitary gland. And the uh, corticotropin releasing hormone will cause the pituitary gland to release adrenal corticotropin into the blood. This adrenal corticotropin will float in your blood to the adrenal glands above your kidneys and it'll signal the adrenal medulla to secrete cortisol and adrenaline and things like that. Cortisol can then go on and induce the physiological changes that you associate with the stress response and it can also act as negative feedback to your to your hypothalamus. So when you're under stress, it'll it'll help reduce the amount of stress that you're already undergoing. So when cortisol and adrenaline is in your blood, basically what will happen is the cortisol can is is basically it's what inhibits your immune system and suppresses it. So less energy is going to your immune system. Your the cortisol will also float in your blood to your pancreas where are these there are these cells that produce insulin called Langerhans cells. So it'll stimulate these cells to release more insulin into the blood. It'll also bind the cells and stimulate them to produce more energy. And it's also an, responsible for the vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. Now when you're undergoing chronic stress, when you're always under stress constantly, it can lead to things like heart disease, increased susceptibility to disease, increased risk of diabetes, gastrointestinal problems, and accelerated aging. So the constant increased beating of your heart rate, that can cause, that can cause damage to your heart if it's, if it's prolonged for too long. So that's why chronic stress can lead to heart disease. Because, you're suppressed, because your immune system is suppressed when you're under stress, you're more likely to get sick because you, you, you don't have such a strong enough, you don't have an immune system that's responding to diseases. You also have an increased risk of diabetes because of the elevated insulin that comes as a result from increased cortisol. You also can get gastrointestinal problems because of the suppression of your digestive system. And you're likely to experience accelerated aging because of the increased oxidative stress that's occurring in your cells because of the increased oxygen. In conclusion, stress is mediated by the actions of your sympathetic nervous system and your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, and chronic stress can have negative effects on your immune system, intestines, and cardiovascular systems. Alright, that's all I have to say in this video, and thank you for watching.